We are going to discuss a relatively uh, complex topic in this video, which is elastic, <coughs> excuse me, strain energy. <coughs> excuse me. We are only um, discussing uh, the elastic strain energy in uniaxial stresses in this video. That is force applied in one direction. Uh, we are not considering any bidirectional or 3D cases in this video. In mechanics, energy uh, is defined as the capacity to do work. And uh, um, you know work is force times displacement usually the displacement occurs in the direction of the force in solid uh, deformable bodies stresses multiplied by their respective areas are forces so for example if you have uh, um, an area like this and uh, a force applied in this area uh, if you have a force applied in this area then force multiplied by their um, uh, that that will create a stress in this area. Let's call sigma. And uh, if this area is uh, dy and uh, dx, then force will be the stress times the area of that plate. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, this force will create a deformation on this body so the product of these two quantities is the internal work done in a body by externally applied forces so the stress times the displacement will give you the internal work done in that body by this force <coughs> excuse me this internal work is stored in an elastic body as the internal elastic energy of it or internal in a elastic energy of deformation let's see how we can calculate the internal energy that is acted upon a body by an external force in this video so what you're going to see is <coughs> excuse me the analysis of a force applied on a body and uh, the internal energy that is stored within the body due to the application of that force so let's consider this case here where you have a, a, a body of unit size infinitesimal body let's say let's say a, a small body of unit size and uh, the dimensions of which are uh, given here and let's say there is a stress due to the applied force there is a stress a uniaxial stress on this body let's call it sigma x and then you can calculate the force due to this or the force that is used to create this stress considering this area which is dy times dz the force will be sigma x times dy times dz where dy dz is the infinitesimal area of the element and because of this force this body elongates so there is an elongation in x direction let's say the body elongates this much and let's call it <coughs> dx um, delta x So the body elongates due to the application of this force and you can calculate the deformation delta x the delta x will be strain 
times initial length. So you know the strain is deformation over or change in length over original length and therefore delta x or deformation is epsilon or strain or times uh, the initial length. So this is the deformation of the body. Now you can from these two the product of these two will be stored as internal energy within the body and that internal energy is created uh, by this force. So with that in mind we can write the internal energy usually internal energy is denoted as u and because it's an a differential case you can say du is equal to the force that is sigma x dy dz epsilon and the deformation is uh, epsilon x dx and you can see this force will be starting at zero and going to a maximum throughout its application so the average force can be calculated as initial plus final divided by 2 that will be the average force so if you divide this will be this is the maximum force if you divide it this initial force will be 0 You're, you have 0 in, in, the, in the beginning and uh, you have effects in the uh, final position so your average force will be the average of these two values which is fx plus 0 over 2 that will be fx over 2 and that is you can you can divide this step so so your average force will be this one so your average internal energy will be sigma x dy d is it times epsilon x dx divided by 2 and you can see these three terms constitute the volume of the area or volume of the body so you can write this equation as half stress strain change in volume and from this equation you can rewrite or you can obtain the strain energy stored in an elastic body per unit volume this is your unit volume so and this is the equation for du and therefore internal energy per unit volume is du over dv is half sigma x epsilon x that is stress times strain over 2 And there is another relation between stress and strain that is stress over strain is Young's modulus you, can, you also know that sigma x over epsilon x is Young's modulus or sigma x is Young's modulus times epsilon x and replacing that here you can write internal energy per unit volume is half Young's modulus times epsilon x squared or you can also rewrite it epsilon x squared is sigma x squared over e so you can also rewrite is rewrite this as sigma x squared over 2e because epsilon x from this analog you can say epsilon x is sigma x over e and if you replace that with uh, sigma x over e you can you can rewrite this like this as well so that is du per unit volume so the total internal energy 
will be that is u will be integral volume sigma x squared over 2e dv. This form the equation. The, uh, the, the these these two equations form <coughs> the equation for the elastic strain energy. And these forms, both these forms are convenient in applications. Uh, although there is they mask the independence of the energy expression on force and distance. For a particular material, the the uh, substitute the substitution of uh, the value of stress at proportional limit gives an index of the material's ability to store or absorb energy without permanent deformation so you, you, you consider a material uh, the where the stress of the material at <coughs> uh, elastic limit uh, we have discussed the stress uh, strain diagram in a previous video and uh, you have a, a point where the elastic limit happens and if you apply the elastic limit in this equation then that quantity will give you the ability of the material to store or absorb absorb energy without uh, uh, a permanent deformation and if you apply the uh, the elastic uh, the the proportional limit stress in this equation then the quantity you get uh, is called uh, the modulus of resilience so it's the same time Modulus of resilience is the same time that is the internal energy, but uh, uh, the elastic limit uh, or the stress applied will be the stress at elastic limit. So, if you apply the stress at elastic limit and then calculate the internal energy, that gives the the, the property of the material, or uh, that is a pro, uh, that is the modulus of resilience of the material which is the ability of the material to store or absorb energy without permanent deformation when you look at the stress strain diagram you can see up to elastic limit there is no permanent deformation so we are using this stress to uh, uh, to calculate the modulus of resilience of the the considered material so this will give you the modulus of resilience of the material only difference is you are applying the uh, the stress at elastic limit in the equation for internal energy so if you use the same logic so that uh, this is the elastic limit and uh, this will give you the strain energy of the material the area under this curve will be the uh, strain energy of the material. If you use the same analogy in the stress strain diagram, then the area under the complete stress strain diagram gives the measure of uh, gives a measure of the material's ability to absorb energy up to fracture. So it, uh, you know the uh, in the stress strain diagram, the fracture occurs here. This is a stress strain uh, diagram, and uh, uh, the the fracture occurs. Uh, this is an uh, it's not a good diagram. Let me let me draw another one here. So if you consider. <coughs> you know the the fracture occurs here so the area under stress strain diagram will give you the total ability or the ability of the material to absorb energy before it it breaks or before the fracture and that ability is called the toughness of the body or toughness of the material the larger the total area of the stress strain diagram the tougher will be the material in in case of fracture 
most of the energy is dissipated in permanently deforming uh, the material and is lost in heat. The energy that can be recovered is only in this region. This energy can be recovered and uh, that we discussed as uh, the, the um, modulus of resilience of the body. But once you start the uh, permanent deformation, then all the energy spent is used in uh, deforming the body and uh, the energy will be lost as heat. So what we discussed here is going back to the start again elastic strain energy in uniaxial cases. Uniaxial stresses. <clears throat> so we applied a stress, we calculated the, the, the force uh, associated with the stress. The internal energy is the force times displacement. So we've calculated the average force of the stress. Initially the force will be zero and at the maximum position it will be uh, the Fx. So we've calculated the force from the stress which is sigma x times dy dz where dy dz is the uh, infinitesimal area and uh, the average force is 0 plus fx over 2 and that is sigma x dy dz over 2 and the body has a deformation of delta x and from this deformation epsilon or strain is uh, deformation over initial length that is delta x over dx so delta x is epsilon x dx so that is the deformation so your product or the internal energy or the product of force and displacement is du half du is equal to half sigma x dy dz which is the average force and uh, times epsilon x dx which is the displacement you can rewrite this, uh, the equation that is half sigma x epsilon x dv because these three terms constitute the differential volume of the body now you have du over dv or inter, uh, internal energy per unit volume is half sigma x epsilon x and you also know stress by strain is Young's modulus so you can rewrite this equation in two forms uh, using the expression of sigma x uh, in here or using the expression or of epsilon x in here so that will give you uh, internal energy per unit volume is half e epsilon x square or half sigma x square over e so that is the unit uh, integral and internal energy per unit volume and uh, the total internal energy you can calculate by integrating into volume that is u equal to integral volume sigma x square over 2e times dv now if you apply the stress at proportional limit in this equation you get uh, uh, the a materials ability or an index of materials ability to store or absorb energy without permanent deformation which is called modulus of resilience so what you all do is you apply the stress at elastic limit in this equation so that that will give you the modulus of resilience of the material so you apply this elastic limit stress and uh, that is modulus of resilience now following the same analogy if you consider the stress strain diagram the complete area under uh, stress strain diagram up to fracture will give you the total energy absorbed or dissipated in uh, creating fracture to the material or that is the ability of the material to absorb energy up to fracture and uh, that quantity is called uh, toughness so we discussed uh, two terms in this video that is modulus of resilience and uh, toughness modulus of resilience is the ability of the body to absorb energy up to elastic limit and uh, toughness is the ability of the body to absorb energy up to fracture the bigger the stress strain diagram the tougher is the material once again thank you for watching keep watching for more videos thank you